East Wing Woodworking. In today's video, we're going to make a couple of simple cutting boards incorporating the CNC. Now before we get into this, let me remind everyone that our 1,000 subscriber giveaway is still in effect. As I mentioned in my previous video, once we hit 1,000 subscribers, I will give away the DeWalt cordless screwdriver kit to a random subscriber that resides in the U.S. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe, smash that like button, and hit the notification bell. Now let's get started. First, we need to mill up this walnut and glue together our cutting board blanks. These cutting boards are going to be approximately one inch thick. Here I was planning on making both cutting boards identical, but then decided not to. Well, truthfully, my better half made an executive decision. The plan is to take the all walnut board and add in a maple inlay. We'll use the CNC machine for that process. The foreman decided to take the skateboard out for a spin. Here I am cleaning up the edges with the table saw and making sure everything is nice and square. The next step is to make sure that one side of the board is completely flat before I run it through the planer. I do this by adding small pieces of blue painter's tape to the low spots on the board to take out any wobble. Now that I have one side completely flat, we can flip the board over, remove the painter's tape, and plane the other side. For projects like this, I typically use double-sided carpet tape in addition to my hold-down clamps to ensure my piece doesn't move during the machining process. 
first operation is making the juice groove. I'm using a half inch round bottom bit and my max depth of cut is 0 0.20 inches. The second operation is cutting a chamfer on the outside perimeter of the board. For this, I'm using a 60 degree V-bit. During my programming, I set the operation to a 16th of an inch offset. This ensures that I only catch the edge of the bit. After that operation is complete, I'll flip the board over and run the same chamfer operation on the other side. Now that we have the second cutting board installed, let's zero its position and start the process of cutting out our design. The design is going to be a maple inlay of the state of California. The first operation is to use a 1 8 inch down cutting spiral bit to cut a 0 0.20 inch pocket in the cutting board. For this operation, I'm using the same eighth inch down cutting spiral bit. However, the depth of cut is 0.18 inches. I prefer to cut my inlay shallower than the pocket to make room for glue. In case you're interested, I will list the bits used for this project, including all the recommended feeds and speeds in the description below. As you will see, I ran into a mistake. When cutting out the inlay with the eighth inch bit, I realized it was too big to follow the tool paths for the Bay Area. I even tried using the 16th inch down cutting bit, but that was too big as well. So in order to make the inlay fit, I had to take a small chisel and remove the Bay Area altogether. For the operation of removing the excess maple, I'm using a quarter inch bit developed and sold by IDC Woodcraft. This bit is known as the hog and it makes short work of removing the excess maple. Now I'm not sponsored by IDC Woodcraft. However, this is the only place I purchase my CNC router bits. I like supporting US based small businesses who provide a great quality product for a great price. Their customer service is top notch. And by the way, a portion of all their proceeds go to support St. Jude. Check them out at idcwoodcraft.com. I'll put a link in the description below. I noticed in a couple of areas around this inlay that I had a very tiny gap. I mean, it really wasn't anything too noticeable. 
However, I knew it was there. So I took some glue and walnut sawdust and went around the inlay, ensuring that no gaps could be found. All we have to do now is sand and apply the finish. The finish I use on all my cutting boards is Howard's Feed and Wax 100% food grade mineral oil. Quick tip. When sanding the sides of your board, wrap sandpaper around a flat piece of scrap wood and sand the edges by hand. This will ensure that you maintain sharp corners and square edges. When applying the mineral oil, if you don't have the ability to soak your boards in a tub of some kind, add a generous amount and work it into the grain. Wait a couple of hours, add another coat. After that coat soaks in, wipe off the excess. By the way, if you like any of the products I make in these videos, they can be found in my Etsy store at East Wing Woodworking. I'll put a link in the description below. Now there you'll find cutting boards, plate stands, custom cigar ashtrays, and a few digital CNC project files for download. So check it out. Thanks again for taking time to watch another one of our videos. If you're enjoying our content, Please smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future videos. And don't forget about our DeWalt cordless screwdriver tool giveaway. Any one of our subscribers have a shot at winning. So see you next time on East Wing Woodworking.